Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch and today we're going to show you how to make this super cute, just very, very quick little um, mug rug and also how to style it for a very quick Valentine's gift. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. So uh, this is my granddaughter Eliza and she just turned eight and we sew together often and we've decided that we're going to do a mug rug series. Um, we used to do this in the shop back when we had a lot of classes in the shop but um, lately with COVID we haven't seen a lot of people so we think we're just going to do it anyway. So we make a lot of mug rugs. These are from my house. I have all kinds of them and of course if you don't know what a mug rug is, it is, it is bigger than a coaster and smaller than a placemat because if all you have is a little beverage and a little snack then you really don't need something great big huge but maybe you need something to kind of absorb all of the hot cocoa so we have a lot of them they're all kind of seasonal and fun and whenever somebody has a snack over at Nana's they get to pick the one that they want so um, this is kind of a popular one and it's just super fast so we thought we would just show you a couple of super quick things and how to make it we do have a free downloadable little template for you and we'll show you how it goes together and we're going to tell you a couple of tricks. So um, when you pick out your fabric you certainly can choose something kind of specific for Valentine's Day and let me show you this one. What we actually did is we put it in upside down in this little cup and this is going to be for Tracy, right. um, our shipping manager here at the shop. Her birthday is, is Valentine's Day. Day. I know. We were thinking, why was she named Tracy? It should have been Valentina or something yeah. like that, right? Cupid. <laughs> we should just start calling her that. Cupid. Valentina. Valentina. I think so, too. So, um, so anyway, we put this together for her, and um, when you put it in there, it's kind of pretty. Then when she pulls it out, she realizes that it's a heart. And so you just need some fun fabric, and maybe there's something else, and the she brings her cute. dog, Denbei, to work with her. And so we've made this one for her, and again, when you put it in there, it just kind of, I don't know, it just... It's cuter than um, tissue paper, so it's kind of fun. Uh, the other thing is um, you can also do one and fill it full of chocolates. So we bought a bag of chocolates and a spoiler alert. These are caramel. These are um, peanut butter. I have not yet tasted the purple ones, so we'll have to save these for a little taste test. So you can do the same thing, just fill it up, and then you can put a little bag. And if you want to put a label on it, We've done some other classes. We did a fusible yeah. applique class when we talked about doing um, cards, cards and, and labels. Yeah, and so you can find that, but it's super simple. All we did was we just took some steam -a seam fused it onto a piece of fabric and cut it, cut out. it out. Yeah, and then we just ironed it. I think I have a little label here ironed it to a little label and then you can write on it or add whatever you'd like to so it just makes for a fun little personalized tag so anyway so this is what we're making and just because this is only going to take one minute we feel like we need to talk just a little bit more so yeah. I'm going to tell you two more things one thing is that when you cut out your pattern you can just cut it out on paper if you'd like to the solid line is your sewn line and the dashed line is what you're going to cut out and you can just do that on regular paper and pin it to your fabric but I just want to tell you that I like using freezer paper we've talked about freezer paper a lot and you can buy just the regular Reynolds freezer paper at the grocery store it works great it is not the same as parchment paper parchment paper is a non-stick and that's what we use when we bake um, but freezer paper has like a little waxy coating on it and when you use it that waxy coating when you heat it it kind of melts to your fabric and sticks to your fabric so then you don't have to pin so we use it a lot every time we we yes. need to we um, iron it down then we don't have to pin and nothing slips so we're going to kind of show you how that works um, other than that, there's nothing else really tricky. And um, 
Oh, I was going to show you. The other thing too with freezer paper is if you have something small, you know, this is our little flower, um, flower patch pattern. So something like this, it works really well. Um, when you have the freezer paper because again it's not even on wool it's not going to stick all right the only other thing too that i wanted to mention is about batting people ask all the time well when i'm making a mug rug or a coaster or a placemat is there a special batting i should use for those three things i i have to admit i tend to just use whatever leftover piece i have we end up with a lot of leftovers because we're always making quilts and when we quilt them, we have those little weird pieces left over, and that's what we do with them. However, if you think something very hot is going to be put on it and you want to protect the surface underneath, then you might want to think about Insulbrite. And Insulbrite is just has that little bit of, um, um, it's like a, like a metal it's a Kevlar kind of a, it a lining looks like it, too. it looks like metal too yeah it has this funny crackly layer but it's perfect for pot holders I always use it in pot holders because then the heat won't transfer through so for me if I know I have something hot I'm just going to use a pot holder if I'm using a little cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a cup of hot cocoa, cocoa. yeah it's really the absorption thing right we just don't want the coffee rings so this is fine um, coffee rings are horrible. Coffee rings are horrible. Yeah, that's why we use these. This is very good. The other thing too, we just wanted to mention, we have a little surprise on the back of this one, because if you're making something for somebody, it doesn't all have to be about hearts and puppies, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's about what? Heroes. Yeah. <laughs> so you can pick whatever fabric you'd like for somebody, which makes it kind of fun. So I could make one for my dad out of the army or out of the navy. Day, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, you'll have to do some fabric shopping to make everybody when you've got a couple days. Yeah. yeah, good thing these don't take very long. All right, so all we're going to do, we've picked out a little bit of fabric here. So we've got a pink one and a purple one. So all she's going to do, I'm going to show you, and then we're just going to turn her loose and she's going to sew these. But all we're going to do is when you take this to use this freezer paper, you really just need two pieces of fabric and a piece of batting, all of which are about eight inches by about roughly 10 inches. We're gonna take our little pattern, and I did print this off onto that freezer paper. I always keep it handy. Like I said, it's just super easy. And then the other thing that you can do, so now my, my paper is stuck to my fabric. And if you see that, can you hear it? It kind of like, it's yeah. stuck there. So yeah, it's kind of good. Like a sticker if you were pulling it off of paper. Yeah, exactly like that. So I've got a couple little pieces of batting here. So we can actually go ahead and cut through all three layers at once if we'd like to. You can put a pin in there if you're kind of nervous. Your other thing that you can do is you can cut through one, iron it to the next one, cut through the second one, iron it through the next one, cut through the third one. But what we're going to do is we're going to sew through all of the layers. And what we're going to do is we'll sew through, we're going to leave just a little bit open down at the bottom, turn everything right side out, and we're going to grab just one other little tool that we use as a purple thing or a stiletto, something like that, that you can poke out the corners just a little bit, and then we're going to give it a really good press. Once we've given it a good press, we're going to sew as close to that edge as we can just to be able to seal that up. That way we don't have to hand stitch that opening closed. Oh. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So close to the edge instead. And then just to give it a little extra, kind of a fun little finished look, we're just gonna come in just about a quarter of an inch and just sew an extra little, almost like a bordery looking stitch around it. And that is it. That's all you have to do. I think that it's harder to choose the fabric than it is to actually make the little heart. Yeah. Right? Right. All right, okay, so we're gonna get started and we'll see you at the end.
Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.